Hello everybody, welcome to Brand Seed. My name is Joe, and today I have a short little lesson for you. We're gonna figure out, well, I'm really gonna teach you how to create custom shapes by combining shapes. And this might seem like a kind of a different idea, but it makes making custom shapes a lot easier, especially when you wanna be precise or you want a specific look. And we'll jump into more about what I'm saying. The one, the tools that we're gonna be looking at today, I just highlighted both of these so I can select these up here. And I'm gonna circle it a couple of times so that, uh, just so you know, you know exactly where we're looking at. We have a tool that's gonna add the shapes together. We have a tool that's, got, uh, a tool that's going to subtract shapes give the intersect shape, divide the shapes up into different pieces, and then also a combined tool that uh, gets rid of the center part or wherever there is an overlap. This is incredibly useful and I am so glad that I figured it out, but I only figured it out by playing with the software. There are so many things that I figured out just by clicking around, just going outside of my comfort zone and trying to figure out on my own. So this is custom shapes and let's jump into a new slide or let's jump into a new project. All right, so I have a new project open. I have it at 1920 by 1080, make it nice and simple like always. And then also as always, I use a transparent background. That way I have a little bit more flexibility when I export into PNG that I can retain and preserve that transparent background if needed. Uh, that is huge. We can go over that in another video of why that's so important. Uh, if you uh, like and comment down below uh, that you want that video, I have no problem doing that because it really is incredibly helpful to any designer. I don't care if, it, if you're focused in Photoshop, I don't care if you're focused in uh, you know, video, there is a way to do that in video as well. So just let me know and let's just jump into it. All right, so starting with this, uh, I have just a blank template. We're gonna go ahead and put a background on. I'm gonna go from one corner to another corner. Again, I have uh, snapping on, so it's a little bit easier for me to go ahead and just snap right to the canvas that I have made. And we're just gonna use this off-white background. It's no real big deal what color you use. You know, obviously you wanna see it. That's, that's the gist of it. We're gonna go ahead and select our lips tool and uh, using shift and click and dragging out, we can make a perfect circle. And what color should I use today? Should, let's go with a purple. I like purple. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and center this up again using the snapping tool right here. We are now going to hit command and while we click on the circle and drag, it'll make a duplicate. Uh, just to make it easy, I'm just gonna, you know, have it up. And shift click to select both of them and then drag them back to the center. Nice and neat. Now, selecting them again, we are going to go ahead and use the addition tool. And it kind of makes sense when you start using it when you add shapes together, it makes this entire shape one shape. So there is no two circles anymore and you'll see it happen over here in your layers panel as well, that the shapes will literally combine into one. And then I'm gonna go into the node tool because it is quite interesting to see that you can manipulate this object as one whole object. And we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. We're gonna add, now it's one solid curve. There's not two circles where this part's going in, and this part's going in. If we uh, select our node tool, we can actually see that we can uh, manipulate it around a little bit. Command Z, maybe you wanna make a like a kiwi bird or something like that, you can totally do that. Uh, so that that is only one of the options. And 
I would say that's a really powerful option. Uh, you can get creative, obviously, with this and just combine so many weird different shapes to come up with something completely unique and new. Now I'm just going to go ahead and Command Z and now we have both of our circles back. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the next one, which is a subtract tool. This kind of works like the masking tool before. And I'm going to go ahead and put a card in the corner to link you to the masking, except this makes one cohesive shape. It doesn't retain one of the circles as like an actual object. So if I hit subtract, it'll take away whatever is on top. So in this case, this circle right here is on top of this circle. So it should just push it through and the highlighted circle that we have will disappear. And then this circle will have the, the other circle that has cut it through. So if we highlight both, we hit subtract and now you see uh, this is one cohesive shape uh, that's just absolutely awesome. What's really interesting about this actually is that when you make SVG files, if you're using masking in any way or the erase function, the file tends to get a little weird when you put it into SVG and that's usually for like web and well, mostly web actually. Uh, you wouldn't be able to retain the the background is transparent if you didn't do this technique. If you use the erase function, like we've talked about before, if we use the erase function at the bottom of our uh, our blend modes, then the circle will preserve and y you'll see if you actually ever use it and export an SVG. So like I said before, this preserves the circle that is on, t uh, on the bottom and the one on top is going to cut through. And by on top, I do mean over in this layers panel, what is on top and what is on the bottom. So if we swap these circles and then we highlight both of them and we go back to the subtract, now it's preserving that circle, the one that was on the right instead of the left. So keep that in mind as you're playing with this and how you wanna organize everything in your file to make sure that everything acts appropriately. Let's go ahead and Command Z back. The next thing that we can do is intersect. So uh, as you can see, according to the graphic here, it has this is cut out, that is cut out, and it preserves what is intersecting in the center. So whatever that overlap is. And if we go ahead and do that, it might act uh, exactly how you would think. And you get the in inside. So now you have like this cool little eyeball shape or a uh, petal to a flower, or if you really want to, like the rays on the sun or you know, anything goes. So I always thought that was really cool. I use it quite a bit uh, actually to get like eye shapes of for like animal logos or something like that. So incredibly useful. Command Z. Now we have our circles back. Now this one is quite interesting. This is divide and you can see the lines here, right? And if we hit divide, I actually want you to comment what, what you think is going to happen. Is this going to uh, separate different sections? What sections are they going to separate? It's incredibly, incredibly useful because now I can use all of this together. As you can see in the thumbnail before too, uh, if I hit it, now I have three separate shapes. I have the intersecting shape and I have the two crescents on each side. And let's see here, I could drag this out a little bit and you can kind of see how this works now. I'm gonna highlight this, center it up, and now you have three separate shapes that you can use. You can, you can put these off to the side as, you can put these off to the side as shapes that you're gonna use in the future. Uh, each one of them is clickable, so I can select each individual one and each one I can manipulate with the node tool as well. So as you can see, that's incredibly useful. Uh, it's, it's sad that it's not so well known and it's not a, uh, it's not as, it's actually incredibly simple to use, but the terminology is a little bit different than what they use in uh, Adobe Illustrator. The, 
what do they call it again? It's been so long since I've used Adobe Illustrator, actually. It's uh, intersect lines, and then you can combine them or subtract each line. And you can do this with uh, outlines as well. It's not just solid shapes. So have fun with this. It's so cool. I love it. So if we Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, and let's get our circles back. There we go. And that brings us to the very last one, the very last combination tool. As you can see, it's kind of, it's literally the polar opposite of the intersect. And this is combined. So you have both circles, but this will disappear in the middle, leaving you one shape. Not two shapes, one shape. So if you want to get both shapes uh, like this, now, now you can divide them up. But as this sands, this is one solid shape. You can't drag them, you can't select one half, you select both halves. Uh, and you have that. What is, yeah, what is exactly in front of us? So if you have any questions as to what the terminology for any of this is, if you have any questions about other tools in here, I saw somebody said something about the personas panel which right here we have the draw persona, which is what I'm in. We also have a pixel persona and also an export persona. Personally, I think that the pixel persona, it, while it is incredibly powerful, it's reducing your capability in uh, Adobe, wow, Affinity Designer. It goes from a math-based system to a pixel-based system. So I might as well be in Photoshop or uh, Adobe or uh, Affinity Photo. And that kind of takes away from me because right now as a uh, as Affinity Designer, I have infinite resolution. I can scroll in and I won't lose any resolution at all, no matter what. I can have this as a super small file, I can have this as a really big file, and I can take these shapes and explode them up to whatever size I want, and I won't lose any definition. I won't get those uh, crazy pixels uh, that you would see on the side, those jagged pixels. So we can talk about the pixel persona, and there are some cool things in there that I might use from for very rare occasions. Otherwise, I'm using vector-based ideas so I can always use them and scale them up to huge sizes for posters or scale them really far down to to a little icon on a website and I will never use I will never lose resolution. If there's anything that you guys have questions about, please feel free to comment in the section below. And if you're new around here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't uh, miss out on any other tutorials in the future for this awesome program. Uh, leave a like if you like the video, and if, you, uh, if you're if you so inclined, go ahead and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any other of these exactly when they come out. Other than that, Guys and girls in the design industry, y'all take it easy, and this is Joe, signing out.